In this explain everything, I'm going to outline the series of events that occur during excitation, contraction, coupling, and skeletal muscle, and relate those to the sliding filament mechanism. Let's start with the somatic motor neuron. This is the efferent signal coming from the CNS. There would have been action potentials traveling down the axon of the somatic motor neuron, reaching the axon terminal. Okay, as we know previously, this would have resulted in a opening of the voltage-gated calcium channels, and calcium would have entered the cell. Okay? This then triggers exocytosis, and the acetylcholine would have been released from the presynaptic cell, which would have been the somatic motor neuron. Okay? The ACH will go across the synaptic cleft and bind to cholinergic, in particular nicotinic cholinergic receptors, at the motor end plate. Okay? The binding of ACH with these cholinergic nicotinic receptors opens up chemically gated sodium channels. Sodium is then going to diffuse into the cell, and this is going to generate a end plate potential. Now, this is going to be similar to what we looked at before. It's going to be a graded potential, okay? and then that graded potential will then reach threshold and trigger a action potential. So there is our action potential at the motor end plate. This action potential would then be propagated over the surface along the sarcolemma, and then it would travel down the transverse tubules. This change in voltage is going to be detected by these voltage-sensing DHP receptors. Okay. What happens is when they change their Conformation. remember these are just proteins inserted into the membrane, it is mechanically gated to the calcium channel within the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So the voltage-sensing DHP receptor mechanically linked to that calcium channel, and what happens is that channel actually opens up, and as a result, the calcium is going to move down its concentration gradient into the sarcoplasm. This calcium is then going to bind to troponin. Okay, so there's the calcium, it's binding to all the troponin, and what that does is pulls the tropomyosin away from the binding site on the actin, okay, the myosin binding site. Here we have the myosin right here, so what's now going to happen is we can continue the sliding filament mechanism, remembering that it is the release of phosphate that triggers these myosin heads to bind to the binding sites on the actin. Okay. Continuing on from a previous explain everything, once the ADP is released, it then is going to go from its 90 degree angle to its 45 degree angle, and as a result, the actin molecule will be moved towards the M line. Again, going back to the previous explain everything, it what next what happens next is that the ATP binds and the myosin head will detach. What you must appreciate is that there's two things going on here that are triggering this whole procedure. And one is the binding of the ACH with the receptor. Okay? It will continue to stimulate the motor end plate as long as that ACH is there. So what we have to do is we have to enzymatically degrade that ACH using that enzyme acetylcholine esterase. The other thing that must happen is we must get rid of this calcium. We have to get it back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. This is going to require energy because we are going to be going from a relatively low concentration of, of calcium in the sarcoplasm to a relatively high concentration of calcium in the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So this is going to be involving, again, an active transport mechanism, and it will involve the breakdown of ATP. It's a calcium ATPase. So in summary, the somatic motor neuron is the efferent pathway of the somatic nervous system. It would have been triggered from the CNS. At the axon terminal, the somatic motor neuron releases the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. That acetylcholine binds to cholinergic receptors on the motor end plate. That is the part of the muscle where the receptors are going to be located. The binding of acetylcholine to these receptors then opens up 
chemically gated sodium channels. Sodium will then move in to the muscle at the motor end plate, creating a graded potential. This is going to be a depolarization, and that is known as the end plate potential. So the initial graded response, okay, is the end plate potential. It then reaches threshold and generates the action potential. That action potential spreads over the surface of the uh, cell, the, the, the fiber, and that's going to be going across the sarcolemma. Okay, and, but in order to get down into the cell, it must go into the cell via the T-tubules. This is just an extension of the sarcoplasm, sarcolemma. <laughs> okay, I'm not doing this over again, so I'm just going to keep on going. So, as the action potential goes down the T-tubule, it is going to then affect a voltage-sensing receptor called the DHP receptor. It changes conformation, and it is mechanically linked, okay, physically linked, to a mechanically gated calcium channel in the sarcoplasmic reticulum. As a result, it opens up. Calcium is going to be released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum and will go into the sarcoplasm, or the cytoplasm, and this is where the myofibrils are. So what's going to happen now is that the calcium is going to bind to troponin. Troponin will pull tropomyosin away from the binding site. Now this is the binding site on the actin to which the myosin head will attach itself once the phosphate is released. Um, and again, that is the whole sliding filament mechanism, which is available on another Explain Everything. So I hope that helped. Oh, one more thing. Don't forget that in order to stop the contraction, we have to do two things. We have to get rid of the acetylcholine, and we are going to do that via the acetylcholinesterase. We also have to get the calcium okay, that was released from the sarcoplasm. We have to get it back into the sarcoplasm, and that is going to be via that calcium ATPase.